Well, boys, what do you have here, huh? What is this? You've been digging around in the catacombs again? Oh my goodness, what is this? Let me see, it looks like. Huh, that's an interesting what, pocket watch. It's got an old skull and crossbone type thing here. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but wow, look at that. And what else is in here? It's like a diary, an old nautical diary of some sort. Let's, let's see what we can open it up here. Oh, wow, looky here. Seems to be a map. And, oh my, indeed. Let's see, what is this? It looks like, well, it looks just like a treasure map of some sort from, oh wow, from pirate days. My goodness gracious, indeed. Let's see what this, what else does it say here? Wow, what? Well, Morris, you seem to have found a great find to our family history. That's right. In fact, this is the diary of my great, 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 great ancestor, the famous pirate captain, Dark Beard Gamonster. Hmm. And, well, it says here that, hmm. There were some interesting things going on back then, it would seem. It says here that he was besieged by his own men, and then he was put off on an island. And then... Yo-ho, yo-ho, it's a life for pirates for me. A pirate's life for me. Oh, yo, yo, ho, isn't it right for me? A pirate and a buccaneer and seven years and four and years of fifteen chest and men dead are the captain if I have a bottle of rum. A rum, a rum, a rum. <laughs> Ah, uh, Captain Beaky, ah, uh, look at them back there. That's right, they left me here, but that's okay. That's okay, Captain Beaky, that's right. I'm the most famous pirate captain in all the world. That's right, Captain Darkbeard the Pirate. Aha, uh -huh. Darkbeard Gun Monster, the pirate captain and king of all the monster pirates that there are. <laughs> Anyway, a little bit of much of rum here. <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, they think they took off and left me stranded. Ah, well, they did. But I tell you what else they didn't do. They didn't take me last two gold doubloons. <laughs> right you are, Captain Beaky. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to take these two gold doubloons and I'm going to invest them. Yeah, that's right. Not in more rum, no, Captain Beaky, but in a great big giant pirate ship. <laughs> and call it the Gargoyle. Yes, and I'm going to go all around the world, all over the seven seas and more, and find, and find the land and waters, all those great wonderful monsters. <laughs> going to put them in my ship, and I'm going to finally capture them all, and then one of these days, I'm going to, I'm going to buy me a great big house, or small one starting out, either way, and I'm going to put those monsters in there, and maybe someday, I, Captain Beaky, someday, me own ancestors down the road, ancestors, descendants, arr, big word for a pirate, descendants down the road, might even open it up and call it a museum of sorts, a monster museum of sorts, yeah. Mm, gargoyle house, or uh, mm, uh, maybe manor, gargoyle manor or something, huh? What do you think, huh? <laughs> anyway, I'll get off of this island one of these days, and when I do, oh yes, when I do. <laughs> wow, that was truly interesting, boys. I really didn't know that I had a, a, a famous Captain Pirate, Pirate Captain uh, in the Gamonster family. And wow, in fact, I, I, I wonder what will happen next. But you know, there's another famous
a pirate, Long John Silver, that was uh, written by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, the same fellow that wrote, that's right, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, this, this pirate fellow, Long John, was very, reminded me very much of, uh, from what I've read so far in the diary of, um, of Captain Darkbeard, the monster, in some ways. I tell you what, let's roll the film and find out what similarities these two pirate folks have had in common. Right, Boris? All right, let's get started now. Shapes I see, but one-legged one's not. We'd best go in. Now clear up them there shambles, or I'll feed you piecemeal to the rats in the cellar. I'll thank you to stay your interest in the management of my inn, and mind you stay that knife too. And if there's manners to be taught, 
I'll be bent to the teaching of them. Belay your swivel tongue, purity. It were only my fitting to watch over ye as any gentleman would. Gentleman? Ha! Wipe your chin. It's as greasy as a launching beam and twice as ugly. Scut your hide out of here before I lose my temper. Yes, Mum. <laughs> Grab these men! They're from Mendoza's crew! <laughs> After them, you swabs! To the street! Here, tis best you have no part in this. I'll be bound. It's Dodd Perch. He mistook the king's pardon for piracy. Slip the rest of his gullet, I says. Why, you. Uh, I, I... Leave him on the table. Lively now. Let him. <laughs> now, ain't it a shame to see you in such ill condition, Perch? Long John, I bring important word to you. I swear. Give him a drop of rum to warm his belly as he passes over. <laughs> now serve up your piece. We were sailing here to Portobello aboard the good ship Hope of Bristol when we were taken by Mendoza. El Toro, eh? I killed every able man jack aboard. And, and we was barren. Governor Strong's little daughter. Her, he's holding for ransom. What concern be the governor's daughter to me? This stinks of treachery. Why did Mendoza let you live, you scurvy dog? Uh, throw him out on the cobbles to die. Aboard were a lad named Jim Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? Him that was shipmate with me at Treasure Island? He was for everlasting... Talking of you before we was taken. Be the lad dead by Mendoza's hand. I know. Not here. Bind his wounds. We'll hear the full of this. He be carrying now, uh, Long John. Rather in. Strike the anger from your hearts. This poor, misguided sinner has departed into the heaven of Captain Flint. It is no longer befitting for the likes of us to pass judgment on him. He'll be coming face to face with old Flint himself, he will, and be made to give proper accounting for his evil ways. Ah. We gave chase to the beach. The scum took to their boat. The very long boat were towed him ashore. Shane enough to point where the Cordoba, Mendoza's brig. You bundlers. They too and dispose of them remains. Lively now. Bringing cutthroats under our very hatches. Shiver me, Tim, was I'd like to squeeze Mendoza's crazy cheese head off his body. Uh, you informer. This council beat for Puritan's ears. I, for one, say this is time to cut and rip. Cut and rip, says you. And us maroon we out the ship like a row of hungry gulls. Not even a bumble to our name. Well, if I were captain, I'd lay a plan. Uh, one, ambush the first colonial trader what touches shore. Two, order in the dead of night. Three, head for the trip. And if you're too chicken-hearted for this, I say depose yourself. Aye, cough up the charts what point the way to the booty. Whales, bile, that's what you be. How would you pass Mendoza at Broken Finger Point? What be your plan for silencing his guns? And what's your scheme, Nothead? And you wish to be captain 
Then by thunder, take over, for I'm stepping down. <laughs> there be your man. Nine hundred thousand pounds. I buried there. Stay your clothes up you tear the parchment. Where be the medallion? It says here the weight of the gold is shown by the etchings on a medallion. Do it now. He's got the medallion, all right. Uh, medallion there be, but medallion I ain't cotton or knows who has. And now, according to your wishes, I resign. Now, I go to see the governor. You said oh, that wouldn't mean you not get out of town. has got a plan. Hold on, John. There's no need, lad, for you to risk your neck along with mine. Jeopardy is not only for the captain, but for the whole loyal crew. Aye! Aye! Halt! Who goes there? John Silver and party. Come to have words with His Excellency Governor Strong. Silver? On who might that be? Plain, simple John Silver, sir. Well, simple John Silver, make off! I says and we go. Uh, mind your manners. <laughs> uh, it ain't our wish to disturb the governor, but to keep our appointment in the proper way. <laughs> Here, what this? Pour the mates, show no quarter! Thus, <laughs> this man Joseph from the seas. We shall feel our steel and rule the day he sighted Portobello. Make ready to sail. Sir, we stand ready. Re-boating pirate. I'll show him no quarter whatever. Him nor any other buccaneer that comes to these shores. There'll be nothing but a patch of blood where his ship has been. But, Henry, what about Elizabeth? She's in his power. What's going to happen to her? Nothing. If Mendoza doesn't wish to boil in oil... John Silver at your service. And who let you in? Your guards, Governor. When I explained the urgency of my visit, they kindly stepped aside. Get out! <laughs> the smell's more than I can bear. Begging your worship's pardon. And your beautiful wife's. <laughs> out with thee! Who do you know enough to bathe when you're in the shadow of your betters? <laughs> Aye, there is a big change in the air now we's gone. You'll be gone too, you rogue, and I'll have you flogged. Out, you scum. Would you draw steel on a poor cripple? And him what's heard of your daughter's plight and come to help you? Henry, hear the man. Maybe he can help us. Oh, oh, begging your pardon, my lady. But might I make so bold as to say you're as wise as you be beautiful? Stay your filthy tongue. Pray speak, sir. Tis the hate I have for Mendoza and all his black-hearted ilk. What makes me offer you my services? Why, I have three men of war in the harbor with metal enough aboard to sink any popinjay buccaneer. Popinjay, says you. Well, don't be fooled by his fine feathers and plumage. He may seem a fop, but underneath he's as wily as a vulture. And when the shot and shell cleave through the planking of his hull, and sends his ship down to the bottom with the sharks. Your little daughter goes with her. Henry, he is right. But knowing El Toro as I do, maybe I can devise a plan to save her. Henry, I beg of you, on our daughter's life. Mendoza demands a thousand gold sovereigns to be left at Broken Finger Point before sundown tomorrow. The money is to be buried on the beach with proper markings. No one shall be there when he goes to get it, or he'll slit my daughter's throat. Aye, he'd cut her pretty throat for certain. Using force be no good, but there is a way. What? I'll have to take this here ransom to Broken Finger Point myself. Me being like one of his own, in a manner of speaking, he'll be more willing to parley. You'll get your little daughter back, never fear. Oh, thank you. 
And what will you get? Satisfaction for doing my duty, sir. Here be the plan. When he's gone, I... I light fire signals on the beach. One fire means he's sailing north. Two fires south. With this information, you gives chase with your men of war and blast him over the horizon. And what makes you think I could trust you? Sir Henry, you have the word of Long John Silver. Your Excellency, there's merit in this rascal scheme. We could send men to watch him. Oh, please, Henry. Very well, Sulnop. There's no other choice. But mark you well. Should there be any slip because of your doing, you'll feel the hangman's rope. As your humble servant, Excellency, might I suggest you fetch the golden sovereigns and I'll be gone. <laughs> Mendozer. It ain't natural for El Toro not to be here himself when gold be the prize. Bide here a while till I gives the signal. the governor's little daughter. I come to fetch her. No thanks you'll be getting for Mendoza, what's sworn to take your hide. My advice to you is, turn back. By your actions ashore, it seem you and Mendoza were not of a mind to share this here ransom gold with your shipmates. Devil burn you, you want to get squid? I'll heave it to the shore. Ain't you forgetting, Mr. Bolex? I'm now captain here. Clap on sail and look sharp about it. I'll be saving my cabin for El Toro. <laughs> reunion and the gentleman from the cask and anchor it warms this whole art it does to meet up with you all again cut him down to the deck alto my compliments to we el toro this is better than i had ever hoped for Aside that petty pinking thing. Do if I didn't hold the trump card, I'd be to live myself into your hands. <laughs> Son of a blundering ox, what did you do? Ah, you may well ask. I'd be most interested to tell your crew what your trusted partner were proposing to do with that there treasure when I just happened to come across him 
and them two poor, no dead seamen, he took a jar. You filthy pig, you'll be shot. Clap him an iron. Begging your pardon, El Toro. But if you and your crew were to know the true details, would be working the plank for Mr. Bowlegs. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! He was going to be... Throw him in chains. I need no suggestions from scum like you. See ya, Blade. I've come to finish this piddling deal. <laughs> you, the governor's runner. <laughs> I have the gold. A one small sack of coins can blind a man to real fortunes ashore be beyond me. What fortunes ashore? One thing at a time, Elton. First, you fetch the governor's little girl. Then give me a boat to shore. And look sharp about it. You filthy dog! While you stand on the deck of my ship, you won't snap your tongue like that. Let's hear him out. Nay, I'll be gone. No. We will go to my cabin. And most welcome. I hear... The good ship Ofa Bristol carried some fine cakes in her home. See, si. and the little elf. <laughs> Another bottle, El Toro. My tongue be getting loose enough to tell you my plans. Kling! Kling, where are you? Curse you cling, I'll have you chained to the kill. What keep you no cabin, boy, a captain of your position? I pressed the no good boy into service from the hope of Bristol. But he is so stupid, the kiss of the rope's end does no more than make him stubborn like the mule. I think I will throw him to the fish. Oh, it is better to use him than drown him. Send for him, my land. Run! And bring that stupid cabin boy. Say, si, say, si, Capitan. Now that you have suckled like a pig of my hospitality, I would like to hear how you will repay this. You have made great promises. <laughs> the promise I made to His Excellency was to deliver you safely into his trap. <laughs> I told him once his little daughter was safe ashore, I'd light signal fires on the beach. One fire to say you were sailing north, two fires south. You will never live to light those fires. Now you... hear me out, Willie. My plan be to send his warship south while you and me goes north and sacks the king's warehouse. <laughs> oh, you have not changed long, John Silver. You are still a man of clever scheme. Ah, fortune rides the shoulders of them what scheme. <laughs> Than the ship was. 
The crew were bribing him to tap the casks. <laughs> He'd taken a fancy to the rum himself, the young barbit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your special way with muchachos, huh? Our <laughs> ship be in the eye, E.B. But no more of that. Send the boat ashore and light the signal. Make ready the longboat. Say, Captain. Hey, a double blow for this governor, Pink. First he loses his daughter, then he loses his warehouse. <laughs> For better to take the young and ashore. No soldier would dare to fire in the direction of the governor's little girl. <laughs> oh, long John, mi amigo. Your mother must have been a witch. <laughs> That's why I brought him along. Now we best move quick. Adelante. Drop behind. Ha-ha, <laughs> Jim. Tis good to feel your shoulder beneath my hand again. <laughs> Tis a long time since Treasure Island. <sighs> What's the matter, Nat? Cat got your tongue. You're still a pirate. Pirate, says you. Why, even with only five toes, I, I'd i cut and rip if it if it weren't for the little girl. How can we save her? Arr, Long John moves in mysterious ways, which you'll soon be seeing. Uh, there's something glistening around your neck, lad. A witch, just a medallion. Squire Trelawney gave it to me. You mean it harks back to our days on Treasure Island. Do it have writing on it? Etching for sort? Yes. Let me see it, matey. I'll cover it well with my hands so the moon won't strike a glint from it. What are you up to? I, uh, I was resting a bit to catch me breath. Move ahead where I can keep an eye on you. Aye. Long John. Until your dying day, I will be grateful to you. I regret to inform you, this is your dying day. So you double cross your trusted partner. El Toro has no partners. Your blood shall run on this floor with that of the governor's pigeon and his. <laughs>
and what's left of his scurvy crew goes back aboard his ship. So you are going to keep the riches of this warehouse for yourself. You're growing up, El Toro. And we both know they could hardly accuse me if I were lying here dead on the floor. Ha <laughs> ha, smart as paint you be. I promise you, Long John Silver, should you ever venture beyond the breakwater, I will peel your skin like a mango. You make it sound real appetizing. Get him out of here! El Toro! Ain't you forgetting something? The ransom gold. wagons and take this here plunder across the island to Potter a spanner and wait there for me. We'll trade this here loot for a ship. <laughs> Marky! There'll be rum in them there casks, but they're for selling, not drinking. And the first man who touches one drop answers to me. <laughs> and now I, uh, I go to make a call. <laughs> on His Excellency. <laughs> While Mr. Silver fought, he told us to run for our lives. Blast him, the rogue has turned the trick. Master Hawkins threw a knife and saved me. Fine work, lad. Ha-ha! <laughs> By the devil's twisted tail, they're safe. This be the lad what deserves the credit. He fought like a tiger. <laughs> Arkins, I think you said the name was. Oh, hey. <laughs> I just finished telling them that had it not been for you, we'd never have lived to be here. <laughs> There's credit enough for all, lad. <laughs> I've uh, bad news for your excellency. Mendoza, he tricked me and sacked your warehouse. The warehouse sacked? Aye. Sack it well, he did. But there was a fortune stored there. Ah, I know. But I did stay him from getting away with the ransom. <laughs> Silver, I know that your way of life is not one to bring riches that last. And so... Whatever I did, I did from the goodness of my heart. And no money in the world can buy that. However... There is one small favor I'd be asking. Name it, Silver, and it's yours. I've taken a fancy to the lad here. I thought maybe you put him into my care. Uh, would you like that, lad? Aye. Should you ask a pardon for some of your deeds? For a sack of gold, the rights to my wine cellar, these I could grant with an easy conscience. But as governor, placing in your care a lad of quality, that I cannot grant. I would like it, sir. Yes, yes. And at your age, I too played at highwaymen and cutting throats. Nay, lad, you'd best stay here at Government House. You're welcome to see the lad, Silver, as long as he's here, until we put him aboard the next ship bound for England. There's one due the day after tomorrow under a Captain MacDougall. The Thistle, I believe she is. You mean, sir, I'll be leaving in two days? Aye, and safely too, by gad. My men of war will see to that. Oh, it is. It breaks my heart to be parted from him. But here, matey, here be a keepsake. Tis a shark's tooth from a real live shark and could be hung on a string around your neck. There. Would you be having a, a keepsake for Long John? Master Hawkins? Yes, Miss Elizabeth? I would be eternally grateful if you would take this small token for what I feel I owe you. I shall always treasure this, Miss Elizabeth. I would like to... <laughs> now, 
How dares a little trinket I fancy having? No, no. This isn't Christmas, and the arbor is very late. Good night, Mr. Silver. I'll never again believe any stories I hear of you unless they tell of your kindness and generosity. Oh, uh, thank you, Mum. Good night. <laughs> Well, in what bilge hole have you been dicing this night? Hey, uh, and don't be talking back. What a disgraceful looking sight uh, you are. From sun up to sunset, not a sight nor sign of you or your scurvy crew. Have you taken to drinking in other swill pots? Look at the cut of you. Look at the cut of you. Dirt stains on your clothes as though you've been fighting like an ordinary game cock and rolling in the alleys. Uh, why, the smell of your loan is enough to wrinkle the noses of pigs. Ah, belay, purity. Belay, indeed. You're not talking to low sailor hands. And don't threaten to clap me in irons or I'll, ba I'll, I'll, I'll bash you over the head. Bleh. You be not captain of this in. Stoking his appetite with me cooking, quenching his thirst with me rum. And have you talked back to me? Never. I'll tell you, Long John. <laughs> Oh, why it be beautiful. Oh, Long John, you lover bird, thinking about your purity every minute of the waking day. Uh, would it be too much to ask for a small nugget of rum? Rum? Treachery lurks in your hull at every turn. <laughs> 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 Milk! I've been poisoned. Go on, drink it down. I've two arrow in a tail to tell for milk. And what have you been up to this day? I've done duty for His Excellency Governor Strong. Oh, indeed, now. In service for His Excellency. Aye. Mendoza, he, he had the governor's little daughter, El, for ransom. And t'was I in person what set her free. The part upon my breath were drunk with his excellency not fifteen minutes past. Well, now, at government house. Aye, and I've been invited back when I choose to see an old friend of mine who be arbit there. Jim Hawkins of Treasure Island. Jim Hawkins? Aye, he too were aboard the Opa Bristol. Well, bless me. The lad be here. The very same lad you've been telling me so much about. Oh, I'd love to see him. My very thought to bring him to your side. He, uh, he'd be like a son to you. Yes, yes, indeed. As I've always wanted. Will you be bringing the lad here? Well, no. We, uh, we've run afoul a diplomatic reef. Yes, and who scuttled our plans? Governor Strong himself. Well, he'd be a wise man. That's why he'd be governor. Are you such a fool as to expect him to send a lad a quality, to follow in the footsteps of an adventurer with no roots? Now, have you ever thought of settling down? Settling down? Anchored at my time of life? Aye. You always were a good cook. And to own half a place as respectable as the cask and anchor might influence the governor. And in that way, he might grant you custody of your little shipmate. Ah. Uh, oh, no doubt the governor thinks it only proper that the poor lad should have a mother and father. Belino. Oh, well, now I'll be making arrangements with the Reverend Monaster in the morning. And this'll be right pretty to air to the wedding. Uh, 
my pretty bird. I, I wouldn't be wearing that around just yet. <laughs> All right. I'll be saving it for our first anniversary. Oh, Lord. Oh. sailing back to claim it. Governor Strong will give us a ship. No, no, I, uh, I've made arrangements this very day to buy my own. When do we leave, Long John? You come tomorrow to the cask and anchor down, but tell no one a word of our plan. You can trust me. <laughs> that be I and Anne who stand in watch. I'd best be off. Now, uh, uh, give me that medallion. They're chasing your friend. Quick, get down while they're gone. Here, I just sheet that and lower me away. Quick now. Here, tie it down there. The medallion. Quick, lad, the medallion. Bring it tomorrow to the cask and anchor. Give me that medallion. We're partners. You blasted warfrat. Mutiny, Willie. You get what Flint gave to hands what went to get him. Them that died were the lucky ones. You You're dirty pirate. <laughs> You're a smart one. Smart as paint, I always said. Good night, partner. Good night, Long John. Well, Boris, you know, this uh, Captain Darkbeard it really was living some interesting uh, lifespans back then, especially with this island that he got marooned on by his own men. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just eager to find out what happened next. Aren't you? Let's read it a little further and see what happens. Oi! Ha ha! Ha ha! Captain Beaky! Look! Look! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! It's they're coming back for me. I knew they wouldn't leave me here forever. Ah, those scurvy scoundrels playing their tricks on me, leaving me here for months on end with just you and me, Captain Beaky. Ha 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 ha! But that's okay. As you can see, I've amassed even more fortunes and 
treasures and gold that wash the shore here on these here isles. <laughs> so now I'll be able to, to buy that boat. It's even bigger than the gargoyle. That's right. And I'll be the fiercest, most scariest pirate there ever was. Even scarier than that there Captain Jack Sparrow that he keep talking about in them there waves and stuff. I'm telling you, needs a bottle of rum for that one. The end of the way. Just about empty. I had a good thing there come just in time. <laughs> wow. That was so cool, Boris. I mean, he says that he started out with only two doubloons. I mean, wow. And, and just to think that with those two doubloons and that rest of that treasure, he started out our family museum here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. <laughs> and, if, and if it hadn't been for him and a few others down the line, Bobby Gum Monster would not have existed. Imagine that. And we also dug out a few other things for our uh, pirate adventures that, um, that uh, Captain Black, uh, Darkbeard left among us. We have a nice pirate chest that has some wonderful gold, a, go, a little gold pirate in it. I guess that's part of the booty that uh, he left for us as well. You know, you, you, you can't go wrong with gold pirates. And uh, of course, his famous cutlass. I bet this, this cutlass could, um, could talk. It could tell some interesting stories. What do you think, Boris? You think so? Uh, looks a little rusty now, though. Uh, well, we'll put it back in, the, uh, in its rightful place. And of course, we have <laughs> one of, one of uh, Dark Beard Gamonster's uh, crewmen here himself. Looks like Shorty Bones. Uh, here with holding on to the treasure what was left of it at least and uh, You're gonna take care of that in the rest of the museum, right shorty bones. Oh, yes. Oh cool. Excellent. Excellent And what else is, do we have down here? Uh, Boris hang on one second scribble 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 ah, ah Before the movie ages ago there was a record, a vinyl LP called Pirates of the Caribbean from Walt Disney. Hmm, and it has all sorts of sound effects in it. Plus it has, look at there, it has its own little treasures of pirates and uh, the adventures. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all, look at all those beautiful pictures there. <laughs> pirates, pirates, it's a life for me. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. My, my, my. Well, let's get back to our film, Long John Silver, and see what happens with him and that uh, Master Hawkins, eh? Alright, let's go now. Staying home these nights, Bert, huh? Johnny, you're looking well. Good morning, Luke. Ah. Oh. See? Now, purity, that, that went nice, eh? I were only trying to get a drop of rum for a friend of mine who had a bad night. A very close friend it must be. Come along now. Take your boarding hooks out of my hand. Olé! A bar! Right. Hold your fire! Blow your rum bubbles into this! You'll be sobering up, you will! So that after the wedding, we can ask the governor for custody of the lad without shame! Believe the swab! Indeed! Rum! Give me rum! After the wedding! Proprietor! Proprietor! Will I? Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, well, may I be of service to you? I'm searching for a man with one leg and another with one eye. They're the leaders of the cutthroats that sacked this man's plantation. We know they are here. Bring them out. Oh, a man with one leg and a man with one eye. Here. 
We've crossed paths before. Oh, now you gentlemen seem a little hot and excited. Permit me to buy your morning glass of ale. Here, you wenches. Give me my crutch. There, now. You must be feeling better, I'm sure. Thank you for the ale, man. If those heathen should come in here, I want you to let me know. Oh, indeed, and I will, Sergeant. You heard what the Sergeant said. If you or your scurvy mate Pat show your faces on the street, they'll clap you in jail. Now, upstairs, I say, and get clean. Where are you going? I've arrangements to make with the Reverend Monaster. We've a wedding to go to. Our wedding. Mind you put the padlock on the rum. And no matter what Captain Silver's orders, he gets milk. From the cut of your jib, you appear to be a seafaring man. It warms my heart to see a sailor drinking milk instead of rum. I myself have never passed alcohol over my lips, nor let it be issued aboard my ship. You have a ship? I'm Captain Asa MacDougall. Of the thistle. Sit ye down, Captain. I hear tell she be a trim little craft. Good Lord's blessing has been denied her. I've but few seamen left. The others struck down by scurvy and bedded in the town. I was told I could find some men here that might sign on. Ah, to be fate over that. Any hand worthy of his salt be at sea already. It's a sorry state I'm in. Me commissioned by the governor to take cargo back to England. And hardly enough crew to up anchor. There may be a way. The plantation workers. Yokels? Aye, but they be honest men and willing. And a good captain could soon lick them into shape. But how can anyone get farmhands to go to sea? It ain't how you get them. Tis how bad do you want them. Do you think you could provide such a crew? You have two longboats drawn up on the beach. Within the hour and I'll deliver them. The Lord hath provided for one of his flock. Amen. Now jump quick and get them both. Aye. Ah. <laughs> Oi, Captain. You mutinous maggot. Ah. Milk. Better to be captured. What happened? Rum. Uh, we'll talk of discipline at a later hour. Now you get a card and keep under cover. I shall be back for you shortly, Master Hawkins. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth. And give my kind regards to Captain Silver. I will.
sorry I called you a pirate. You best be keeping in trust your own medallion. It's our medallion. We're partners. Ha <laughs> my little matey. Ha <laughs> bless his heart. Now sit he down there. <laughs> Here. Here, there's some nice cool milk. Now refresh yourself. Thanks. You promised to tell me the plan, Long John. Ah, there's time enough for that lad when we're aboard the thistle. Then you're going back to England? I am. Last night you showed me the light. I've made up my mind to go back and stand fair trial at execution dock. And then, if my name be cleared, we'll set sail for Treasure Island again. Oh, I'm proud of you, Long John. Squire Trelawney will defend you. He'll get you off. You have my word. <laughs> Bless his little heart. <laughs> His ear. Proceed to Flint's face. It fits the map. There. There. Sealed in blood. Not to breathe a word of our plans to a living soul. We'll take the witness to the bargain along with us. Now, then, you go say your farewells to the governor, and I'll join you aboard the thistle within the hour. Aye, aye, Captain. How I bought the most beautiful things your eyes have ever seen. Now, put them carefully in my room. Mind you, don't soil them now. Here you are. Oh, no, this one I'll take care of myself. Oh, don't tell me. I know. This be Jim Hawkins. Oh, we waited a long time for you, lad. Look at him. Why, he's twice as handsome as you said he was. Here, yeah. now, he, he clings to you like bitch he does. I knew you'd fall in love with him at first sight like a son. Oh, you're going to like it here in Portobello. When you start going to school and you meet the other fine gentlemen that'll be going to school with you. But, oh, now have no thoughts of going back to England. Captain Silver and I are working out what's best for you. But you don't understand. Oh, indeed, I understand far better than you give me credit for. We'll have something to be teaching you. And you'll have something to teach us, too, hey, Long John? But... Aye, 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 there's no doubt about it, Jim. Governor Strong's coach for Master Hawkins. Well, bless me! Royalty calling for him already. Now, mind you, stay friends with Miss Elizabeth, too. Goodbye, Miss Pinker. You'll call me Purity. Oh, Mother. Bless him. He's the sweetest child I've ever seen. If I lived to be a hundred, I couldn't be happier than I am right now. Look, Long John, I'm a bride. Hi! Now the Reverend will be here within the hour to discuss the ceremony. And remember what the sergeant said. You don't dare show your face on the streets! Shiver my timbers! A landlubber I'll never be! Ahoy, matey! <laughs> oh, eating a dry lunch. This be years in the cask. Full, too. Now, I'd be willing to trade it with a thirsty man for a few minutes' visit with my friends inside there. No visitors. Be gone with you. It was 
good rum you made me waste. Stingley, Eric! Here! See that this doesn't slip between your clumsy fingers. Tie it to the bars. Then jump aboard! We're off to sea! It's full and no farmhands. Oh, no patience, Captain, patience. These men are just as eager to get to sea as you are to have them. There be your men. They don't look like plantation workers to me. No time for belabbering. Here be a man and here be a cook. And our wisest move be to put to sea. And shark too. Give me that musket. Hold in the name of the king. I say! Rob John, come back! Come back or I'll tear you limb from limb! You'll rule the day your mother ever spawned you! Come back! Their silver screw. More sail. It's an ambush. We shall lose them in skeleton reefs and sail for Socorro Island. Move lively now! It'd be strange indeed to have the guns of a man of war fire in on our side. <laughs> it took you, lad, to bring the light into my black heart. It's a good feeling knowing I'll be going back to England to say my name. <laughs> Here, we best get to our duties as honest seamen. <laughs> going back to execution, Doc. Heat swing in the air. And us with him. But, but, but he told us we were bound for Treasure Island. He's off. I have a feeling Captain Silver will change MacDougall's course. <laughs> lad. Tis good to feel the roll of a ship again. That it is. Now, you best be serving the good captain and his mate. 
You and me has got to make a right smart impression the first night. I long, John. There we go. Ahoy. Here, belay now. The captain be served before the crew in this here galley. A serving of information where this bumboat is headed is the dish we're hungry for, be thunder. This be time for council, or I'm a shock. Why, you stupid squids? Can't you see with men dozer playing ducks and drakes with that man of war? Now be our chance to take over this here craft. And so we thank ye, Lord, for the good food which ye have blessed upon us this day. Amen. Last your stupid spigot head. Where's the salt? I'll, I'll get it from the galley at once, Captain. Cutting with, I say. Slice it through from here to here. Throw it to the sharks. Many a day since I heard the splash of a body in the briny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take this slaver away from Captain MacDougall, tear out his pious tongue, and let it flap a sermon in the sun. <laughs> First, you'll have to give me your solemn oath that you'll not let any harm befall Captain Silver. I owe him my life. Captain Silver, the cook? Promise me there will be no bloodshed. He's a friend of mine. You have my solemn word. Long John Silver is a pirate, and all the men that signed on with him are pirates. They plan to mutiny. M mutiny? We'll cut them down like wheat. But, Captain, you said there'd be no bloodshed. Bargain, Jamaican. Hold, Burden. I'll not break faith with the lad. Just when does this mutiny take place, son? Tomorrow noon, sir. When Long John comes to talk to you, he'll put his hand on the companionway railing. That's the signal. Forewarned is forearmed. Remember, you've given your word. Charity shall cover the multitude of sins. New Testament, Peter the fourth, eighth verse. You're a good lad to have told me this. Move among them if you can, as though you didn't know. I'm counting on you to play a part on the side of righteousness. They'll rue the day they ever tried to trifle with one who stands in the Lord's shadow. I get it. You deal with the pirate's whelp? <laughs> Have plenty of powder and shot for the pistols. And tonight at seven bells, when it's dark enough, change course north. If I remember rightly, you never were a man that sickened at the sight of blood. There's no land on the road to England. I asked. Ahoy there. Ah, oh, lad, I, I missed you in the galley this morning. I, I had chores for Captain McDougal. Ah, <laughs> good lad. <laughs>
Um, could I have a word with thee about the galley stars? Aye, Silver. I was thinking we might have a roast this evening from Salt Park. <laughs> if I have your permission. <laughs> Last yeah. silver. Would you draw arms on me, a poor cook? Cook? You're a pirate. Strip the weapons from these black sheep and herd them over here. We've been scattered. Hold your tongue! Ye black sinner, I hope you're ready to meet your maker. No! You gave me your word. Ha 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 ha! Captain MacDougall never breaks his vow. I was going to put them ashore on that island and maroon him with the rest. But that's worse. Ben Gunn was marooned on Treasure Island and he was daft. Since you know so much about it, you'd better join them. Yeah, little informer. Please, Long John. If I'd known he was going to do this, I never would have told him. He professed to be a man of the Bible. Ah. Sometimes them what quotes the Bible has less Bible in their hearts than them what don't. But I can say one thing, Farry lad. I admire your honesty. Ah. Over here, lively. Fate has dealt us a deadly blow. This be Sakaro Island, Mendoza's secret hideout. Not only marooned, but at the mercy of Mendoza. And him sworn to peel our hides like mad goats. All because of him. Yet, Belay. Belay, says he. You may hold us off for a spell, Long John, but he's to die. That's right, Silver. Rush me, and I'll fire these pistols. And that'll bring Mendoza's men around like a pack of hungry wolves. Then we'll all die. I'll tell you how to live. Your schemes won't trick you out of this, Silver. Oh. In a short time, night will fall. Mendoza's crew will be coming ashore to carouse, leaving maybe two hands on watch aboard. Then we'll set fire to that warehouse. While they're fighting the flames, we'll take over the Cardover. <laughs> How be that for a plan? Who's to set the fire, Long John? I'll set the fire. Ah, they'd see the hulk of ye, no matter how dark it is. Better to send Pink Eric with a flag on top of his hand. <laughs> it needs somebody small. If it needs somebody small, who could be smaller than him? Why, you white-livered scum? You'd have a lad do a man's work. I'll go myself. You lumbering through the bush would be like sending a buffalo. He's why we're marooned. I'll go, Captain. It's our only hope.
It hurts, lad, to know you be harboring ill thoughts of me. You started a mutiny, Long John. Why did you do it? I were a coward, lad. But how would you feel to be going back to England? to stand trial without a farthing to your name. So I figured we'd first sail to Treasure Island and get the gold, using my share to pay for my defense. I wish I could believe you. So that's what's eating me, lad. Ha <laughs> ha, blessed Zard. Ahoy there! Perch! Call all hands on deck! Lively now! Stand by to hoist the colors! From now on, this here ship be engaged in honest trading and will be run man of war fashion and steal under true colors. She'll fetch out the Union Jack. There, lad. Hoist away, lad. Salute there, salute. Salute, you swab. Found them on the beach. Water. Water! Bert, speak. We escaped from Silver. He is headed for Treasure Island. Aye, but our loyalty to you is above all. It is the duty of all men loyal to El Toro to kill Silver. You have betrayed me. No. Water. Water! Take them away and yeah. shoot them. And that is what will come to any man who shirks his duty to El Toro. I thirst for Silver's blood, but we're helpless. 
No, mi amigo. El Toro is never helpless. Remember, our other ship is due from Barbados. Treasure Island land. The place what first brought us together. And now we are going back again. You and me. <laughs> there she be, lad. As quiet and peaceful as a tiger, basking in the sun. Where be the treasure? Aye. Let's get our hands on a big encounter. Let's have at it, I say. Why, you money grabbers? Think you no love in your heart? for the peace and beauty of this here tropical island. It's like a dream. Quiet, beautiful. A man might take a mind to spend the rest of his life here. To the trees, lively now! Who's firing upon us? I say back to the boats, away from this cursed place. Not while there's gold here. But Long John, remember the stockade. Aye, stout and strong she be. It was that way. Right, lad. Have your pistols at the ready and follow Jim Arkins. Lively now. You fed her over there. Pat, take that loophole. Big Eric, the door. Blast their rights. Who be on this island? Aye, and how many strong? old gunner. You too, Squire Trelawney, and all of us. He was done in aboard the Hispaniola. I shot him when he tried to kill me with his knife. He's dead. Where no ghost what fired that shot? Here, you. Into the tower and keep me covered whilst I parley with him. You go, Frogger, but keep low. Flag of truth, Israel! Us be brethren! Ah, you haven't trained, Silver! I wasn't like a serpent, you were! A one-legged serpent ye are! A one-legged! 
be safe shelter, and we've powder and shot enough. We'll anchor here, and before long he'll come begging to us on his knees. from this accursed island. Perfectly. I'm not staying here to be cut up piecemeal. Not me, I ain't up for running for it. And then it's with me, join up. There, you be slaughtered like hogs in springtime. Don't try to stay us long, John. We got minds too and ways of doing things. Think twice, lad. windows! Make fast the loopholes! You ain't eating nothing, lad. How he hated me. I can still see his face. He won't lay a finger on it. My word. <clears throat> According to folks' rules, we've had counsel. Back to your post. It ain't us what has to rub with Israel hands. It's you and him. Uh, it were your treacherous deed that made him the devil he is. Why should we all die for it? And since it's your blood he's thirsting for, why not slip us the medallion? So, you're standing for captain again, eh, Patch? Medallion you want. Well, medallion you lamb. Ah! It went down the from the direction of the beach. Thank you. Thank you, Long John. Israel has. Blind as a bat. I. But I see everything. Six of you. Mendoza's closing in. Seven. Trapped huh? like rats in a sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> I can save you all! <laughs> if I 
wish to do that. And you have my solemn affidavit. You'll go equal shares in the treasure. Treasure? Treasure. I'll strike a bargain. Your lives for passage back to England. Land me on the coast of Cornwall, hard by the Benbow Inn. Before I pass on, I have a favor to return to a lad by the name of Jim Hawkins, who did me this. Here, you. What? <laughs> you have a bargain. Make haste. <laughs> Follow me! Grab <laughs> firearms and powder! Find your head here. There's a sharp point. No shelter for them anywhere. A thousand gold doubloons for the man who brings them to me. Ha! Find that hole there. Old Bruce stepped into that and broke his leg. Had to shoot him with it from the screen of it. It fair gives me a chill, it do. Uh, he sees more with none than I do with one. John, where are you, Long John? Thank <laughs> you. 
traitor of an empire! And it's mine! All mine! <laughs> I will kill you, Jim. It'll just be your eyes. You're right, Jim. That passage is blind. Me eyes sicken you, boy. Is your little heart beating like mine was on the mast that time? Have you ever wondered what it's like not to look at the sand and the sea, always to wear the cloak of night? You're soon to know, boy!
want that? Killing your own kind. He took what was mine. The first man what makes a move can count amongst his treasure a ball from this pistol. We want no cap now. We've been through this together. We go out together. All of us shares equal. Even Jim there. Where be the lad? And his real hands. Blouse the lad. Blouse him. <laughs> Not one doubloon, not one jewel, leaves this island till that lad be found. Looks like he's dead. He's no use to us. Dead or alive, he is my bait to catch the barracuda called Silver. Ahoy! Send you there! Set the lad free, and I'll surrender to him. Show yourself first, Silver. you do this, Long John? We've got a chance. We can run for it. There'll be no trickery. I've given my word. I won't go. They'll kill you. You'll obey orders. I refuse. I'm going back. <laughs> Now go join the others. as newborn lambs.
We finished them. The rest took to the surf. Trying to reach the boats. Yeah, and we're taken by the sharks. Hey. Arr, buddy. El Toro. You pledge to peel my skin from me like a mango. <laughs> when you seem to be the riper of the two, <laughs> we'll maroon him here and leave the vultures to do the peeling. <laughs> This is now a happy day. Long John Silver, no more go away. He stay here with plenty gold. Eat good food, get fat and old. He will be leaving you, gentlemen, to your and horse and pipe. A pirate's lot is not a happy one when he's hanging dead. In the noonday. My friend. Oh, Silver, I've been waiting for an opportunity to thank you for the very generous donation that you made to Government House for arming the harbour against pirates. As an honest citizen with uh, uh, property to protect, uh, it be my duty. Your health, gentlemen. And yours, Excellency. Gentlemen, your attention. The Reverend Manasta has come here to join in holy wedlock his purity pinker and the Honourable Long John Silver. Well, you both <laughs> <say> <laughs> now, you old son of a gun. It's mutiny. Miss Pinker, I'm honoured to be a witness at your wedding. Thank you, Your Excellency. There's no one I'd like better. Isn't that right, Long John? They went that way. Him and Jim. Not again! Long John, come back! Come back, Long John, you soulless devil! Goodbye, ladies! Good luck to you! <laughs> Wow, Boris, that was a great film, and it was great memories, too. I'm so glad that you uh, was rust, rust, rustling down into the catacombs again and finding all those wonderful treasures, especially about the family and especially about Long John Silver himself. You, you know, I've often wondered where that delicious food came from, from that wonderful restaurant by the same name. Mmm, that Silver sure was one heck of a cook. <laughs> I just hope it wasn't uh, Captain Flint that he decided to cook, huh? No? I, don't, I most certainly hope it wasn't Captain Peaky. Oh, dear. Oh, no. No. Probably not. No? No. Anyway, it is delicious food, right? Yes. Great film. Great memories. Thank you for sharing them here at Monster Movie Night at our home, Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. I'm your internet whore host, Bobby Gum Monster, along with Boris the Buzzard, saying, until next time, Arr, matey, keep screaming. Ha 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 ha.